All right, Yanni, thank you so much for doing this. Very excited right, to Yanni, chat with you. Um, very excited. I wanted to, to chat with you. Obviously, I want to get into um, Lemon Perfect and the story to, behind that. But you actually have a pretty unique background as a founder. You actually have a pretty unique background. I was curious to learn, I guess, what were you doing before um, starting the company? I was curious to learn, and I maybe kind of what, what you led you to company, what you're doing now. And maybe kind of what led you to what you're doing now. Well, Sean, first, thanks so much for having me on. It's great being with you, and congratulations on on the success of the podcast and your career. I coached college basketball for ten years, um, you know, and 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 ultimately through that uh, or through some indirection, I guess, found direction in this journey. But um, ten years coaching college basketball. My last year, I was at the University of Nevada Reno, and that's where the the seed of this journey was planted, if you will. And we can get into that as we as we chat here, but, uh, certainly a unique, Mm -hmm. a unique road, uh, traveled for me. Mm -hmm. But what I would tell you is that, uh, my skill set transferred really nicely into, into building uh, and running. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a ton of parallels that I'd love to kind of dig into as we go. Um, that I'd love to kind of dig into as we go. I guess, um, where was the inspiration what, initially for Lemon guess, Perfect? Where did that come from? Were you was still coaching at the time or did you step away and you still, what, what happened there? Time, or did you step away and what, what happened there? I was. So my last year I was at the University of Nevada in Reno. And uh, the short story is a friend of mine wrote a book on the ketogenic diet. And in the back of Matt's book were all these, these sample meal plans. And every day started by drinking yeah. organic lemon water. And, um, yeah. and, and I was searching a little bit at the time I was looking for structure from both a, a workout plan and, and, and diet plan perspective. And, and, and Matt's book really had this, this entire A through Z program. And, and I said, Matt, I'm in, let's do it. Right. And, and, uh, lemon water or organic lemon water in the morning for me, uh, became, uh, one, a part of my morning routine a non-negotiable part of my morning routine, but also, a painful one, right? Uh, or a painful process. There's one Whole Foods in Reno, buy organic lemons, cut the lemon, squeeze the lemon, juice all over, bland taste, clean up process. I mean, a lot of mornings I just threw my hands up in the air and I said, my God. Um, but I stuck with it. And uh, fast forward a month or so uh, later, and we're, we're in the the conference part of the season, and I'm in the I'm in the, the, the video room, which was right next to our locker room with, with our coaches and our players. And at the time, we were all drinking by. Um, and, and remember, this is 2017. So, so the first quarter of 2017, this is at the very, very, you know, peak mm-hmm. of their growth story. Uh, there was a 7-Eleven across mm-hmm. the street from our, from our arena practice facility that we would go get the bottles. And, and I just, you know, Sean, I had a moment. I said, hold on. Can you take organic lemon water? And give it the flavor profile of buy, and that that was the seed of the journey. And that intersection of great flavor that's also good for you has been the bedrock of our brand really from day one. And it's not like I ran in the locker room and said, "Let's go!" Like I'm, I'm, you know, we still had games to play, and we ended up we ended up going to the NCAA tournament and, and losing uh, in the first round um, to Iowa State. The game was played in Milwaukee, and right after that, you know, at the end of every college basketball season, the staff typically goes away for a couple of days and just, you know, tries to, 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 to take a breath. And I was in, I was in Los Angeles, Santa Monica, and I was having um, lunch with a friend, a very entrepreneurial friend. Um, and we were just chatting through this idea. And John said, I love it. He said, anything that you can do that can capture a piece of someone's daily routine, what they do in the morning when they first get up or what they do at night when they go to sleep or any point B, C, D, E in between is worth going for. And I, Sean, I jumped up. I said, my God, I've got it. And that night I Googled how to start a beverage brand. And, and that's, uh, and, and now here we are, you know, just, just what, just, just under five years later. Um, but it's been a, uh, it's been a, 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 an incredible journey, a challenging journey, uh, a journey of many sleepless nights and a lot of darkness, but really now, um, for the for the first time, we 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 tend to have more days of light than dark. So it's a nice the, place uh, to be. From a health perspective, the uh, 
from just for uh, folks that don't know, because I've had ketone IQ on the podcast before, I've had levels health on the podcast um, before, and I do the lemon water before. thing myself. Um, just for folks that are trying to understand, understand what the benefits are of that, what is it that makes lemon water so useful for people? What is it that makes lemon water so useful for people? Yeah, well, it starts with with just you know, healthy hydration, right? Lemons add flavor to water, right? They make water a little less boring, just generally speaking. So I think the foundational bedrock of good health mm-hmm. uh, lies in hydration, right? So you start there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we found the way to make, you know, uh, water more interesting and not boring. Um, lemons, you know, let us, let, lemons themselves, and we, we typically try to start at a high level of, of functionality or, or uh, you know, and, and so we talk about, uh, vitamin C and electrolytes from potassium, right, kind of as the lead. And then there are, you know, there are multiple benefits of lemons as you kind of go lower down the, you know, you have citrus bioflavonoids, which um, have proven to be, um, mm. you know, carcinogen fighters. Um, and, and mm. um, you know, you have other benefits of lemons that revolve around digestive health or, um, you know, uh, fresher breath. Uh, you know, you have... Um, you know, uh, the, the, the collagen synthesis, for instance, uh, requires vitamin C. So, you know, citrus fruits can play a big, a big role in that. Um, the health benefits are extensive. We tend to try to play at the top of the funnel there, if you will, and just try to, you know, familiar points of functionality around vitamin C and Got and, it. Um, and and I would imagine, obviously, from a keto Got perspective, it. it doesn't spike your blood glucose either. You're, it doesn't spike your blood you, from what I've heard, either. you're, you know, your goal though you're, is to. I think the phrase you used is have like a consumer grade flavor profile. Um, and so sweeteners are probably a big part of that. I would imagine you have to spend a lot of time researching and experimenting with, you know, various ways of kind of creating that flavor profile without kind of creating the kind of junk that maybe most of your competitors are doing. So what was that process like? And what did you arrive on? So what kind of allowed you to create a product that tastes similar, but has kind of a superior, um, kind of health, uh, Profile to it, um, kind of health uh, profile to it. No, I appreciate that, Sean. Look, we we number one for me is you have to win on taste, right? That is that is number one. So uh, that's where that's where I started, right? And 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 we said that we want to win on on Main Street USA. Like that's the the, the when I think about when I think about building uh, you know food or beverage uh, products, packaged products. It has to have a taste profile that can win on what we call Main Street USA. And, you know, that's what I thought about before I even thought about the, you know, the nutritional deck, right? I knew we wanted to to have great flavor. I knew we wanted the the product to have zero sugar and be low calorie. Um, You know, we, we landed on organic erythritol and organic stevia leaf extract, which does have, you know, a glycemic uh, index of zero. So yes, I mean, ultimately we got to a point where we're delivering a product that has, you know, um, uh, that, that, that has no glycemic response, right? So, you know, we're keto certified and we call ourselves keto's most refreshing drink. Um, but you know, that is all to us, um, a little bit more secondary than just winning on flavor and then kind of the, the, the nutritional, you know, uh, boxes that, that, that America really responds to. So zero sugar, being certified organic, right? Um, low calorie. And then beyond that, um, you know, we, we've obviously got a lot of utility for, um, you know, uh, diabetics, um, you know, with, with no impact on blood sugar. It's a magical product um, outside of, you know, and giving a real alternative to one out of 10 Americans that have, you know, diabetes. Um, you know, and then certainly the keto community, the dieting, the diet, the community that may be, you know, dieting and, and, and not want to put, you know, any sugar in their diet. So it, it, it really, it's interesting for us now more than ever, we're realizing that we're satisfying 
um, the needs of so many consumers with a product that really yeah, has never super been cool. done. Um, so you said you Googled uh, how to start yeah, a beverage company. Um, I know that you, I believe you, you raised kind of relatively early. I'd be curious the journey from Google to a successful initial raise. Google what was that like? Did you have an MVP of some type? Did you have a product? Did you like? develop a brand? Um, and then maybe for folks that are trying to build like a direct to consumer brand or a CPG type of product, like a what did you maybe learn from that process to be helpful products. for them? What did you maybe learn from that process to be helpful for them? Yeah, you know, it's a great question, Sean. I, listen, I had no idea what I was doing, right? I mean, the, 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 I, 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 a friend of mine uh, in, in the VC world, he said, are you a, he said, are you a Delaware C or an LLC? I said, a what or a what, right? I mean, that was, I had spent, you know, you don't make a lot of money coaching college basketball, and I spent, you know, early on, all of that on like formulation and the initial branding work and the IP work and that sort. Of, um, and and um, and and so what what ended up happening is is the truth is is um, we always we we had and I was running around with little you know four ounce you know shots that that I was pouring out from like a half gallon jug and at the beginning the product had to be get cold so it's like a whole nother but but but. Um, you know, what we always had was a story of big TAM, right? We, we knew that we had a really big addressable market and we knew that we could dream in a really big way, right? And so, you know, fundamentally, there was, we, we were able to deliver a level of enthusiasm or excitement to, uh, you know, what I would certainly consider a friends and family uh, network at the beginning. Um, but when you marry the taste of lemon perfect, and it was just, you know, it was just our original lemon product at the beginning. There was no skew, you know, there were no different skews. There was not right. We didn't have any of that. Um, and, but what we were able to do, we were able to marry an incredible flavor profile with really big upside. Okay. And I had no idea how we were going to go from four ounce sample bottles to billion dollar business. But I knew what we had at the beginning and I knew where we wanted to go at the end. And so when you put together a, a like, you know, a little short deck, right? Like there was enough in there to grab a hold of and say, my God, in the one in 1000 chance that this thing actually goes, it can go to a really big place. And so I was able to tell that story early on. And, and we did, we raised uh, over a million dollars from 40 incredible investors that now have, you know, a paper markup of, you know, almost 10 X. Um, and so, uh, I'm, I'm proud of, of what we've been able to do in the call it four years since we went out. Um, but, but, uh, look, I, I told everyone at that, at, at those tables that we were going to make a lot of mistakes that our margin math, um, didn't matter. And, that we had a path to get there. And the truth is, is that we've made a lot of mistakes. Our margin math did not matter at the beginning. It does now in a really material way. Um, and that we would get there. And Sean, the truth is, is that we're, we're on our way now. I mean, you know, we've cut through the chaos, if you will. And, you know, there are some retailers in America where we are uh, we, we are taking some major, major share away from the incumbent players in the cool. enhanced water. I'd love cap. to talk about maybe some of the milestones along Super that way. Cool. I'd love to talk um, about maybe some of the milestones. Just one more question about that, that early raise. Um, How, just one more question about that early raise. Did you approach investors from like a strategic perspective in terms of them filling gaps in some of your like knowledge? Or like you said, was it just folks that believed in you and in the vision? Like you said, was it just folks that believed in you and in the vision? I think it was, Got these it. were jockey bets early on, Sean, to be honest, right? Like this Got was, it. this was, you know, Yanni, you won in Oklahoma when you were a graduate assistant. Yanni, you won at Harvard when you were an assistant coach. Yanni, you helped uh, Vanderbilt, you know, recruit, you know, one of the best classes in, in, in school history. Then, you you know, you go to Cal, you win at Cal, you go to Nevada, you win at Nevada. Like this was, listen, you've won everywhere along the journey. Now let's go try to see if you can win on your own. Um so I, I, I really do appreciate the group that came in. Um, th there, was, there was no sophistication or, or plan to uh, trying to get 
you know, uh, uh, food and beverage investors into the into that initial round, uh, we needed capital, right? Like we mm-hmm. needed a chance to just play. And mm-hmm. and the the truth is, is it was probably better that I didn't, you know, that I didn't. Uh, in fact, the the few conversations that I had with like actual professional investors at that point couldn't have gone worse, right? Everyone that knew me invested everyone that didn't knew me and just kind of looked at the story said, uh, I'll take, I'll, let me see how this goes. Um, and you know, but it is a good, you know, it's a good lesson for, you know, for, for early stage investors bet on the jockey. Right. I mean, just, just try to, you know, peer into their, into their heart and, and, um, you know, and I, again, I'm so appreciative of that group, but there, there was, listen, this was, this was a, 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 a a very, very, you know, binary early stage bet, like, you know, write a check and, and probably don't think about it again. Now they're thinking about it now. Um, uh, but the, the, the truth is, Sean, is that we did not have a group of, of food and beverage investors in our seed round. We certainly do now. Um, but, uh, um, you know, that, that was, I'm just very, very blessed and humbled that we had such an incredible group of people come in early on and, and, and basically mm-hmm. give us a chance to at least figure out if there was some, some, you know, product market fit here. And, and we found that. Yeah. Along those lines, was, um, you know, everybody talks about yeah, product market fit lines, and it's um, admittedly a pretty nebulous product market fit and it's idea in terms of when you found it and when you haven't. And with tech, in terms of when you found, you know, you have the benefit of certain types of tech, very granular yeah, data as people in our or whatever, whatever it is. Very granular what, data as people in our group. What does product market fit look like what? for an organization like what yours? Obviously, like there's the taste like question and do they like the way it tastes, like but like, obviously, like there's when did you know that you had it? Taste, and like, maybe what were the markers you know that you were looking for that kind of signify that, oh yeah, we were there. Signify that, oh yeah, we were there. I felt, I mean, to be honest, within a couple of weeks, because we, we, you know, we launched the product in Southern California at Bristol Farms and we supported it. I mean, we, we believe that we had to be a mile deep and inch wide early on. And, and that really helped us, right? We were very, very concentrated on Southern California. And, and, and so we supported those stores with demos and then we added Arawan pretty soon after and then, and then Lazy Acres. So at the time it was 22 stores. Um, but within a month or so, I mean, you know, Sean, we had blown out shelves. Uh, we had, now we were in the produce set, we were keep refrigerated items. So, so, but, but, you know, uh, so there was no back stock, right? I mean, there was, you know, but, but, um, the truth is, is that you, you had such an incredible response to the product at demo and it translated into sales. And then, you know, you would take a couple of days off from demoing and you would have, you know, the, the shelf would look like, you know, you just, you know, made a nine out of 10, you know, bowling. Um, and, and, um, and so I, I think we, we, we actually, we, we didn't have a business early on. Um, like there was no, there was no, you know, unit economic story. There was no business story, but there was a product market fit. Like we knew that we won on taste. We knew that we won on packaging. I mean, we've made several improvements, but structurally, you know, the packaging has, has, has gone unchanged. Uh, we've made copy adjustments, but the gradient packaging, the yellow cap. Um, so like we, we knew that we had something right away, right away. We didn't have a business, but I knew that we could at least think that we could build something here. Um, and the truth is, is that we used that data to then go raise our next round where you did have professional investors come to the table and they did, they did look at the data and the hair stood up on the back of their neck candidly. Um, because I think they felt like, you know, if, if they could make a bet in beverage, this might be a really good one. Yeah. To try for to put founders that are contemplating yeah, kind of creating or in the process of creating again, a, 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 a beverage or or CPT type of product. Again, a, do you, uh, is it safe to say that you recommend like network compression you, early on as a strategic uh, lever to pull where you can, really you can stay really close to those early stores. You can go in, in on premise and see what's happening and make tweaks and things like that. Was that, 
see what's happening. Is that part of the playbook that if you were to do this again, you'd do, this, do it the same way? Is that part of the playbook that if you were to do this again, you'd do, this, do it the same way? Yeah, I might do it in Milwaukee or Albuquerque or a, a, like, you know, a different market where you could really penetrate that market. The, 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 the truth is, I mean, so, listen, the, the playbook worked, right? Like it was, I mean, this, I mean, we, 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 we did that right. Um, and, and the truth is that you have a lot of independent business in Southern California, like a, a, a Bristol Farms, like a Lazy Acres, like an Arawan, Gelson's to a degree, right? So, so it allows you to get authorizations quicker than if you, you know, if you went to New Mexico and had to wait on Smiths and Safeway, right? Like, and, and you, you might not be able to actually penetrate, right? Like those bigger national accounts. So the truth is, is that there, there's probably not a better place for a first time, you know, founder, entrepreneur to go than Southern California for food and beverage. Um, so, but, you know, look, what I would tell, I, I would tell probably anyone that's going to start a beverage, figure something else out, um, you know, not to be a deterrent, but it's a, it's a really hard road. Um, look, we, we feel like we're on our way. So, you know, I, I tell our team all the time, it's hard, not impossible, hard, not impossible, but you better have uncommon DNA to take What are this some of the out. challenges um, that, and that are maybe not, unique in that space relative to other types of startups that you've maybe interacted with? The amount of capital that's required mm -hmm. just to survive in advance, right? I mean, you know, it, it's been well documented. I mean, we, we've, we've, raised over $40 million. Um, now, look, we've got a, a, a really nice cash position on our balance sheet today, but but it is a capital intensive business because you have to win on the ground early. And so we made, we made um, um, you know, decisions that were, were, I mean, you know, made for anyone that looked at like our P&L early on, I mean, you'd say, well, why are you going to put seven people against the market in, in, in the Southeast, right? Like we just got, we got an authorization at Publix and like, it's like, like you know, it, it just, but you need to support the business early on so that you, you know, so that you can, mm. you can live another day. And the truth is that raising capital is not easy. It's been, it's been, uh, we've been very fortunate because we have, you know, because I, I do believe that we're building a billion dollar business and people see the opportunity. Right. And it's like, if you're going to bet here, like bet on us. Um, and, and, and um, you know, but, but Sean, the truth is, is that it, it is a, it's not easy to raise capital. Um, if you look at the brands that have won in our space, um, you know, it's, you're talking about enhanced water. You're talking about two in, you know, in the last, you know, 25 years with vitamin water in 2007, mm. by in 2017, um, that have chased down, mm. you know, big liquidity events. You've had some failed processes in our category recently. Um, you know, and it, it just, you have such choice in beverage um, that, you know, making noise um, is hard, right? And, and so I would tell you, you have kind of those two things pulling against you in that, you know, you, you're, you're going into a world that, that the barrier to entry to start, I mean, I get a, I get a call or a text almost every day. Um, hey, I'm starting a beverage business. Hey, my friend is starting a beverage business. Hey, my, my mom is starting a beverage business. And I'm, I'm like literally every other day. Um, so you have very low barrier to entry, okay? Um, and no one realizes how hard it is. So, you know, uh, what, what I, but what I would tell you is you'll find out pretty quickly that you're going to get knocked in the tooth and, and, and um, you just got to be able to have the stick to uh and the perseverance to stay the course. But capital intensive business, really challenging unit economics and cash flows early on um, and, um, you know, and just a lot of choice. Um, and, and, and then, you know, finding, you know, a category to play in. Uh, that ultimately would be attractive to, you know, to a strategic, you know, the, you just don't have that much choice, right? And, and so, like, you know, are you going to compete with, with Gatorade and Body Armor in the isotonic category? Are you going to compete, you know, with, with Coke and Pepsi and, 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 
you know, and, and, and Dr. Pepper and soda, right? Like, are you going to compete, you know, in, in water? Like it just, it's, it's it, in, in a commoditized category, like water. So it's just, it's hard, um, but not impossible. And, um, you know, but that's what I would say is that th those are, those, they're real challenges. And, and, and um, again, if you can break through and, and still be standing in three or four or five years from the time you start, um, it seems you know, like you had an intuitive sense from the beginning that brand was going to be a like pretty important part of the equation here in terms of like, you know, shelf space and getting somebody to stop and getting them notice you and creating brand preference and all that kind of stuff. What maybe have you learned about brand building uh, as you've kind of gone through this journey? Brand building as you've kind of gone through this journey. Yeah. You know, I knew that we needed to create a fashion show on the shelf. Right. Like that, that, that was the one, you know, the big thing for me was like, we've got to be able to create a fashion show on the shelf. So we, we actually had, we actually had, um, uh, you know, different packaging when, when we first launched the product. Um, and, and, um, you know, those first bottles came off the line and I, I looked at it in my hand. I was like, my God, like, this is, this is, this looks like a medicine bottle. Right. And so, so that was one of the one of the big decisions that we made was to change the packaging before we sold even one bottle, um, and it's working for us, right? I think when you think about how do you win in in beverage, there are four P's, right? Products, uh, packaging, pricing, architecture, and people. And so, you know, we think that we've got the product box check, product box checked, packaging checked, pricing architecture. We 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 have a very very sophisticated retail sales strategy led by an incredible team. And then our people go in there uh, and we get after it. I mean, I think we've got the best field execution in all of beverage. Um, and, uh, and so anyway, I mean, yeah, we, we you know, I, I think the question was about brands. Um, you know, we, we, we've got really good packaging. I think there's a difference between packaging and brand uh, that sometimes gets, you know, mixed up a little bit. We're still actually working on brand. We're trying to figure out, you know, how are we going to look and live in the world behind our, you know, behind our packaging? But the truth is, is that the packaging is a 10. Um, and, you know, that, that's, you know, I, I can sit there and say that, but what I'm, I'm, t I'm saying that because mm -hmm. packaging is driving trial and the whole thing in food and beverage mm -hmm. is, will your packaging drive trial? Will you allow, will it help a consumer, you know, make it, remember right now, a lot of consumers, they're going to our set. They're looking for vitamin water. They're looking for buy. They're looking for, for hint. And so now our packaging has to do the job in a split second to convince or convert that, that, that consumer. Um, and, you know, or it has to stand out when you're on display. And, um, you know, again, the, the, the data would suggest uh, that, that the, the packaging is. And it is, seems like some of the working. variables there are obviously. You know, the way that it looks, but also you have a different size than everybody else, right? Like it's a, it's a smaller, a maybe a slightly smaller bottle or a narrower bottle or whatever it is. So as I'm walking down the aisle, I'm either looking for you because I already know about you and I recognize the shape or if I'm to the point about trial, uh, it's distinctive from that perspective. Was that, I assume that was a very deliberate decision. Is that accurate? Was that, I assume that was a very deliberate decision. Is that accurate? Yes and no. Uh, so we 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 started as a as a keep refrigerated item. Um, we were a, a produce item, right? So so actually, the truth is is that this was just the stock box. Um, I didn't have any choice, right? And and all I knew was all I know all I knew was 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 sewage is on fire, watermelon water is on fire, right? Like and they they're in a very similar bottle. So I said, okay, well that's got to work, and and. You know, remember at the beginning we were in we were HPP'd, so the bottles would get you know you'd, you'd get filled right, um, and then you go on a truck and you go down the street and you go into this big kind of you know pressure chamber and all the bottles would get loaded up. So you had to have what we call a bullet bottle to be able to go into those chambers in the most efficient way. Um, and you know the, the truth is that it ultimately became something that was very differentiated and shelf stable water. So we, we stuck, we, we, we've kept it. Um, we do have vessel size innovation because the one place that we do get, you know, beat up a little bit is, Oh my God, your bottle's too small. I drink it too fast. So, so we are going to go to a larger bottle, but we're going to keep, uh, uh, we, we will keep the, 
the authenticity of the shape um, and and just put you know and, and just put a Got bigger vessel size it. into the box. Um, so you mentioned team as being Got kind it. of the fourth Got P or um, people. So you mentioned it. team as T being kind isn't of the fourth a P, uh, uh, but people as being as the fourth P. T isn't um, a P. Um, and obviously, there's a very direct parallel from your background um, uh, in terms of team building and all that kind of stuff. One of the things I've heard about you is this phrase kind of uncommon grit. And you talked about overcoming those challenges and hard, but not impossible, all that kind of stuff. What are maybe some of the, the ways tangibly that you've used to either screen for talent that have that trait? How do you maybe model that to your team as a leader? Is that something that you think you can develop in people or do they have to kind of already have it when they arrive? How do you think about that? People or do they have to kind of already have it when they arrive? How do you think about that? That's a great question, Sean. Like, I know within within a couple of minutes, if you've got, you know, an unyielding enthusiasm for Lemon Perfect, right? It has to start with that. Like, you got to believe that there's magic inside the bottle, right? So that's where it starts. If you don't believe that, like, if you don't believe that this is the next billion-dollar brand, if you don't believe that you can actually go and impact the health of the American consumer everywhere, like, this is not the job for you. And I and and at some point a little bit further down the road, I talk to everyone or I interview everyone. Now it's the like I'm the last last person in, but but I make sure that they're prepared for the 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 the, the how hard the journey is, right? How arduous the journey will be. I say all the time, like I tell, I mean, when I when I talk to people, this is not a job for the common man or woman. It's not like if you if you want to work from nine to five, Monday through Friday. Um, th- there are other really good places out there uh, that, that you know, when you come in on Monday morning, they might pat you on the back and they say, they might say, well, how was your weekend? You know, what did you do? Like, that's not what, it's not, that's not what we have. It's not what we have. But, 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 but like, w- we don't come in on Monday morning and pat people on the shoulder and say, oh my God, did you have fun sliding down, you know, like, like down the river? Like we, 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 <laughs> And I don't want to like. We also we also sprint mm-hmm. and take a breath, right? Like we we we're not mani- right? But so so we talk about this concept of clear minds and fresh legs all the time, right? Like we 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 prioritize that, but we don't look at days of the week if that makes sense because it's not like you know Publix is closed on Saturday. It's not like Stop and Shop is closed on Sunday. Amazon doesn't mm-hmm. shut down on Tuesdays. Right. So you're selling You're all, I mean, the products available all the time, 24, seven, 365. Um, so we have to embrace a different mindset when it comes to that. What I would say is that the payoff and not just the, the monetary payoff. Yes. Everyone here is an owner in the business. Everyone has upside in what we're doing, but, but the truth is, is that the payoff can be like, nothing that you have in your orbit before or after. Like we can actually change the way that people drink water. We can impact, uh, uh, we can remove millions of pounds of sugar from the American diet. We still live in a beverage ecosystem that's dominated by high calorie, high sugar options. And ultimately people, people, America is not going to, to replace their high sugar, you know, beverage unless the flavor profile matches, no way. And so, you know, like, but every so often a product comes along that's unbelievably disruptive. A product comes along that can actually change fundamental consumer behavior in a category, right? Um, And we think we have, we think that that we've found an incredible, a uh, unique opportunity uh, to disrupt a category mm-hmm. in that's thirsty, uh, pun intended, for innovation. Um, and, and uh, you know, how magnificent is that, that we get to wake up every day and build a business that can drive towards a liquidity event for our investors, that can change uh, the, the, um, the financial uh, uh, story of all of our all of our people, um, you know, um, whether that's 
you know, paying for college or saving in a different way. Um, like that's incredible. But, and then the third piece of that is, is, is that we get to do real social good here um, by delivering something and allowing people to put something in their bodies that's truly better for you, right? Um, and we embrace that uh, in a pretty serious way every day. Um, you know, and, and so for me, that that's a, you know, you kind of get this triality, if you will, of build a great business, be a springboard for your people for whatever comes next, right? Every day, every week, every month, every year, I want our people to feel like they're growing. This will not be the last stop um, you know, professionally for most of our people, this is a springboard. And then the third one is, is, is the impact on, on the health and wellness of, of, um, America. And, and we hope mm -hmm. at some point, obviously you, you know, you, you, you're casting a, a big vision with this obviously, and you, you know, you, you, you're casting a, the a stage that you're in now where it's, it's, you're not a foregone conclusion, but like you've, like, you've, like you said, like you're, you're, you're on a very good trajectory at this point. Um, you're on a very good, a lot of founders struggle with, um, kind of those, those early days again, in terms of getting elite kind of those, team members when, it's not that clear. Members. And, and like when, in your case, you know, again, you, you didn't come from food and beverage, and, and like um, just like for early investors, that might've been interesting. Um, just like but for early investors, given your background, like, you know, you, you were in D1, but given your background, but you're, like, you know, you're trying to recruit D1, against yeah. the North Carolinas or the Dukes or whatever it was. I would imagine the there's some parallels in terms of like casting a vision and trying to convince somebody to go, go play for David rather than Goliath, if that makes any sense. Like, what did you maybe learn from that, that process? Of the, either, either from coaching that you what applied, did you maybe or learn from that process, of the, or either, either from coaching um, that you just as the founder or, itself, kind of that you know that you would advise other people um, trying to cast that vision for early kind of that, you top tier you teams. Other people trying to cast that vision for early top tier teams. Sean, I love that. You know, the, the truth is, when I was at Harvard, um, you, you know, you had recruiting lists that that came out, right? Like whether it was Rivals or Scout.com, ESPN. And and there would be a number one player in the crunch in the country, right? And so so when I was at you know, when I was at Harvard, like I just said, the hell with it. We're gonna start at number one, right? And these are kids that these these are kids that are that are being recruited by Kentucky, UCLA, Kansas, Florida, right? Like what we would call, you know, blue bloods, uh, Indiana. And 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 my mindset has been the same here. Um, you know, we're always gonna start with with the the top level of talent, um, or at least try to chase that talent, um, and it's uh, we, we've we've been able to you know ring the bell if you will a couple of times, and 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 um, you know we're going to continue to try as the brand accelerates with the absolute best talent out there. Um, what I'll say is, um, you know, I think people like being a part of a team that uh, has the ability to have a chip on their shoulder every day to be an underdog, right? Like um, we're, we're, we're not talking about settling. Like we're talking about building a business that, that can be not a billion dollar enterprise business, but a billion dollar sales business, billion dollar sales business. And if we just consider, and it's not the exact math, but let's just say that Every time that we put a bottle into the world, we get a dollar, right? A dollar of revenue. Um, you know, eventually we want to we want to sell sell a billion bottles. Um, that that's you know that's and and I actually believe like we've got seventy one people at the company today. I think if a couple of things, you cut those people open, they bleed yellow. One, two. I think we're all in, 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 you know crazy enough to believe that we can actually do it. And so you need that, you need that insanity, if you will, among your people, amongst your people uh, of just a belief that that wouldn't be shared by the, the, the external world. Um, but when I look at the data, I look at our ACV, I look at how much channel growth we still have. And I sit there and I say, my God, I think we can actually do it. Um, and so, you know, so, so I guess to answer your question, um, we, we, we're like, you know, we're like that team that, that, you know, you feel like is, is, has, you know, some real, you know, uh, juice behind it, if you will, 
Maybe we haven't cut down the nets yet. I can assure you that it's not like you know, it's not like we've won a national championship, but it's like we're just you know, it's like we're 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 in the NCAA tournament. You know, we've won a couple games. Now we're in the Sweet Sixteen, but we can win four more games um, and and be the last team standing. And I do think that you know, when you only get to to professionally, you know, do a couple of things over the course of your career. Like this is a pretty hard one to walk away from speaking candidly because you, 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 you've, you've got, you, you know, you've got so much uh, momentum in the business and it's black and white velocity data. Right. And, and we're well capitalized and we've got great leadership. And so like, you know, uh, you, you feel good about sharing the product with your, you know, your friends and your family. So like on that front, we do think we're a pretty attractive place. Like we don't look at ourselves as, you know, like, like as, as a, you know, I, I look, I, with all due respect, cause you know, like we, 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 we're sitting at their tables right now, like, you know, Coke or Pepsi or cured Dr. Pepper. Like, I'm not sure that those are exciting places to go. Like we feel like we're an exciting place to go. Um, and, um, yeah, that's and really that's cool. the truth. You mentioned the idea of velocity and yeah, that's really from cool. what you I've heard about you, velocity and that seems to be a core value and, value and kind of executing that quickly at a high level seems to be pretty important. Quickly, How do you practically instill that in your team? Um, how do you assess it? it? Uh, are there, um, are there routines or rituals uh, or processes or things like that that kind of allow you to move like faster as an organization than maybe your competitors? As an organization than maybe your competitors? Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we listen, it's a scoreboard business for us, right? Like that's, I mean, that we, we, we prioritize, you know, how much product we sell. So, you know, I come from a very competitive environment you know, coaching college basketball, like, you know, it's a 94 by, by, by 50 court and you either win or you lose, you walk off the floor and you're either one point better or you're one point worse, but there's no in between. And we look at it the same way, right? Like right now in the enhanced water category, we're seventh in dollar share. And we want to be number one. Like we want to cross the finish line. We want to be the category leader by dollar share in enhanced water. So we think about winning the street fight every day just to try to get there, right? Like that's, so we have embraced, you know, a culture of like, let's roll up our sleeves. We don't, you know, we don't need anything besides our bare knuckles and a great product and let's go get after it. But it is a street fight out there and uh, our people are, are executing at a, at a really high level. And, and we, we do have something called E equals V at the company, execution equals velocity or execution drives velocity, right? And so we, we do, we have a lot of kind of, you know, um, um, you know, abbreviations or expressions here that all get our team focused on, on velocity, but, but you don't get to velocity unless you've got elite execution, right? So, you know, how do we drive that execution? How do we get that display activity? It starts with really, really great retail programming. And then, you know, it, it ends with, with what we would say ORE, Outstanding Retail Execution, ORE. Um, but we got a bunch of, you know, acronyms, right? Abbreviation, WTSF, Winning the Street Fight, right? Um, you know, PIY, Paint It Yellow, ES, Get Your Extra Shots Up, right? Like go to an extra store, go to two extra stores, demo on a Saturday morning. Um, what you do in the dark will come to light. Like we just, we, we, you know, that's the mindset, that's the mentality. So yeah, this is not a, you know, I mean, we, 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 we have fun, right? Like a lot of fun. Uh, we hang out with each other, you know, and, 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 and do cool things and, and, and that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, we really are all tied by the one commonality mm -hmm. of wanting to win and to be one point better. Um, and again, it's not, you know, it's, 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 you know, uh, it, it's, it's not an environment for everyone, yeah, you but it's a fun one. If you're, if you're, and, you, know, you, you brought in, 
I would imagine a pretty and, elite you know, team, you, you, in, you know, in terms of um, elite team you know, the retail component in terms of, I know you go direct to consumers you know, well online, so I mean, I, in terms of, I imagine I that you supplemented so I mean, with some really talented people, people to kind of help figure out some of those pieces. What really have you given them in terms of taking your background as kind of casting a vision, coaching and mentoring team members on a daily basis? Like what, what, what are some of the, maybe the superpowers that you have that are unique to you as a CEO that you've kind of tried to instill in your team that maybe other founders would be able to kind of benefit from? That maybe other founders would be able to kind of benefit from? Hire great people and let them run, I think is, is really important, right? So take your time. Um, but, you know, I try to, I try to be the, the, the one with the face paint on, right? And then, you know, just really empower our people to build their teams and coach their teams. Um, you know, that, that's, I think that's the most important, you know, piece of this all. Um, but, you know, you got to have everyone rowing the boat in the same direction. So, you know, the constant communication and the elite energy across the, across the organization, that, that, that bar gets set by me, right? Um, making sure that, you know, we don't have any loose screws, right? Making sure that we look under every rock, that culture, that mindset, that's me, um, you know? And, and so, you know, that, that, that's the, the truth is that um, I, I want to be, you know, my, my, my superpower is bringing energy to the table every day. I mean, look, Sean, there are two ways out of this office for me. One is in a box and two is with some coins in my pocket. So I'm going to give it everything that I possibly have. I mean, that's just right. Like I, I mean, man, I don't even know how I would walk outside on the street if we don't win. Like, I don't even know what that, I don't even know what that looks like. I mean, that's, I, I mean, I toss and turn at night sometimes just in that, it, it, with the fear of that. Like they're, they're, I'm telling you right now, like there is no turning back. If we don't win, I'm a dead man. Like that's, that's the, I mean, and, and, and so, so, you know, like there's, there's, there's a sense of urgency, right? Like we built a moat around, around them and perfect around our, IT, our IP, but someone's coming and it's not like, it's not like, you know, it's not like Coke's pulling vitamin water out of their system tomorrow. They're, they're trying to grow. KDP's trying to figure out what they do with Bob. Like, they got to they gotta find a way. Like, and so, you know, Hint's got to, you know, rise from, from, from some of their recent dislocations. Like, they're, like, they're, like, there's, I mean, everyone's fighting. And, and so there's a sense of urgency. Um, and I have to, I guess, you know, my principal challenge every day is to, is to make people feel like this is the one shot that you have to do something really special, but at the same time, make sure that they don't feel the pressure, oh, yeah, that totally. burden, if that makes sense. And so uh, I think we've done, I think we've done a good job of it. Um, you know, and, and, and again, getting 71 people to feel that burden yeah. without undue duress, that's challenging. I would say Along those lines, really coaches, from what I understand, you can correct me if I'm Along wrong, those but, lines, coaches, from you know, being very detail oriented seems to be a pretty common trait you know, being very uh, amongst kind of elite coaches in terms trait. of uh, amongst kind of elite finding a way to balance this like insane competitiveness with, like you said, executing at a really high level. With like startup said, land, you know, like the phrase problem. move fast and break things startup is pretty land, common, the but the problem is, is you break things, right? And so, um, the are there things that you've implemented so, at an operational level, that you've implemented like, you know, management cadences, things like that level, to kind of help people, you know, management cadences, things like that have that level of velocity people, while still executing at a really high level. Does that make sense? While still executing at a really high level. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, um, you know, what, what I would, what I would say is, is, you know, we, 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 we really prioritize being on the same page. So, you know, our leadership team meets every Friday. Um, you know, we have call sheets um, when anyone on our team talks to a distributor or to a retailer, right? So, so you know, that's that's been something that we've prioritized to just making sure that everyone's on the same page. Um, you know, we love to share success. 
So, you know, we have a Slack channel called the Yellow Board where it's a national Slack channel. So whether you're winning in Florida or winning in, 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 you know, Oregon or anywhere in between, like the company sees it. So we love to, you know, celebrate each other's wins, each other's successes. Um, you know, uh, and then we just, you know, we, we, we try to, you know, come up with a, a really smart, sophisticated plan and then we get after it. And, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We're getting better and better, right? Like, again, our, our retail strategy, I think, is as far as emerging beverage goes, you know, it's, it's very, very strong. Um, you know, we, we, we prioritize field execution. I mean, Sean, 85% of our organization is sales headcount. So, you know, again, like if th- th- that, that tells everyone that like, we're just focused on, on, on selling product. Um, our best marketing is the product in a cooler or on display, to be honest, right? Like that's the best way to get bottles into someone's hand. So, so, um, you know, I hope that answers the question, but we just, we just really prioritize communication and, um, you know, and, and that's been, yeah. And then I do, I mean, you know, we, we, there, every, every, I mean, I look at every centimeter of every, whether it's, you know, a, 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 a packaging, whether it's a, a point of sale, uh, you know, piece of point of sale material. Like I am obsessive, obsessive about every centimeter, about every word, about every color, you know, um, you know, someone, someone put a t-shirt in front of me today that was not an exact match of, of, you know, yellow or PMS 102. <laughs> and I, I lost my mind. Like you got to have a maniacal attention to detail. Yeah. It's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise it doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, otherwise it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, now sometimes you just want to let things go and run, but, but we're, we're pretty, we're yeah, pretty dialed in. But you up. mentioned the, the retail thing yeah, specifically is kind of you a key to your success retail, and without kind of, is kind of a key to your betraying your secret sauce or whatever it is. Kind of are there lessons that you've learned again for folks that are, are kind that of trying to operate in, in where retail is going to be kind of an important piece of their business that, uh, that you think might be applicable for other types of brands and other types of categories that you think might be applicable for other types of brands and other types of categories. Yeah. I mean, I think, listen, we, 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 we prioritize winning in retail, right? I mean, um, I haven't seen, you know, at least at this point, I haven't seen a Coke or a Pepsi truck back up to Amazon. So, um, you know, like, like ultimately we want to be, you know, we, we want to, we're a beverage business. So we have to think about ourselves in a very different way than, you know, if we were selling socks, right? Like we're not selling socks, we're not selling mattresses. Like we're, we're not selling shoot, like, you know, beverages are, relatively inexpensive and they cost, you know, and, 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 and shipping is, is expensive. And, and so, um, you know, with that, um, you know, we've tried to, you know, create a flywheel with retail first, right. And then, you know, we, we, we do, you know, feel very strongly about our, our e-commerce business. I mean, our Amazon business is, is on fire and, 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 you know, we believe in the value of having, you know, a good dot .com uh, business um, or at least a presence. Um, how we allocate spend is an ever evolving discussion, right? Um, but, but, um, you know, I, I just think in food and beverage, um, when you're trying to drive trial and the immediate response, uh, to, uh, you know, to a customer like walking into a Publix or walking into a, you know, a, a shop, right? Or a croak, it's very, very different. Like when you can actually see a product and put your hand out and grab it. And then, like, have immediate satisfaction of drinking the product or taking it home and eating it right away. Very, very different than having to wait for something online, right? Even, like, instant commerce, like the, you know, like, GoPuff, for instance. Yes, boom, fast, quick. But it, th- th- there's still some friction in food and beverage on trial there, right? Like, what we've learned is that so much trial for beverage happens in store. Um, and, um, uh, and so, you know, we're, we're going to continue to prioritize that channel. Um, you know, now having said that we're, we're seeing more and more acquisition, uh, on, on our e-commerce platforms for people that are willing to wait a couple of days to go try, uh, you know, uh, liquid gold. Well, well I want to be respectful of your time. Um, 
you know, well, I mean, it's a really impressive story. I mean, it sounds like a you know, relatively it's a really small team story. still like relatively to be uh, to have achieved what you've managed to achieve to again be, in a relatively uh, to small period of time. So, um, you know, congrats on everything. It sounds time, like. So. Y'all are off um, to know, the races. Um, it sounds like for folks that maybe want to learn more races, about uh, um, Lemon Perfect, or where, where where should we send them? About uh, Lemon Perfect, or where 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 should we send them? Lemonperfect.com would be the best place to uh, to go, and and uh, really appreciate that plug, Sean. Listen, it was great being on. Um, we're excited about the story that we're building. What I'll say is that there's only one number that matters, and that's the last one, right? Like we're in the game. Uh, we're, we're, we're in the game. Um, we only want to just survive in advance. But the truth is, is that, you know, these outcomes are, are, you know, somewhat binary, right? I think our chances of being a zero outcome are far less today than they were a couple of years ago. But, but as I've talked about, we have big dreams. We want to be the last, you know, the last team standing. And to do that, Sean, there's only one number that matters, and that's the last one. So I appreciate, you know, your your laudatory comments, but but um, you know, we're going to remain grounded. We're going to remain hungry, and I hope I can come back on the show here in a couple of years and and um, and have more stories of success. But again, congratulations! Yeah, this has been very to you. fun. This it's hard awesome. not to interact with you and not. No, this uh, has been very fun. It's hard not, not to start to bleed yellow a bit. So uh, uh, it's been a, it's not been not a pleasure. To bleed yellow a bit. I really appreciate so, the time. Uh, it's um, been, and it's you know, pleasure. best of luck in the really in the coming months and years. Time. Um, and you know, best of luck in the in the coming months and years. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely.